Welcome to the Mindful Mutiny Podcast. And what I'm going to be doing today is a book review, something that's going to be a new feature in the Mindful Mutiny Podcast. And I'm going to start with a very special book. And this is Getty Lee's My Effin' Life. Now, I've been a Rush fan for all of my life. I am a drummer. And of course, you can't grow up and take yourself seriously unless you are air drumming to some degree by the incredible licks of Neil Peart. And this band, it's hard to explain, but if you're a Rush fan, you know Rush being the incredible Canadian rock trio from Toronto, Canada. Very young in my life, I found a cassette tape on a bus that I was riding on in marching band. And it was a Rush album, and I didn't know who they were, and I started listening to it. And it wasn't long after that these incredible philosophical words that I was hearing were becoming something to live by. And when I understood as a 14-year-old that this was a rock band called Rush and that they had many other albums, I started just buying and buying and not just learning how to drum to them, but learning from the lyrics and getting these wonderful tips on great books to read because the philosophical framework of every single song is something wonderful and different. Now, Getty Lee is the lead singer and bass player for the rock trio Rush. And the reason that I am reviewing this book on the Mindful Mutiny podcast is that I am all about growth. I'm all about the great things that make a life meaningful. This book speaks to the commitment, the high commitment to a craft between three amazing human beings and musicians. The three of them, Alex, Neil, and Getty, were very strong in not compromising at all through their career. It's what they were known for. And this book does an amazing job of talking about just how difficult that was and how committed the three of them were to not compromising. And lastly, another reason why I'm reviewing this book is just about the tremendous amount of loyalty between these three people, which I'll get to towards the end. Firstly, Getty goes through an amazing and heart-wrenching account of what his family went through in the Holocaust before he was born. A family, many people that he never came to know because they were murdered, made sacrifices so that his parents would be able to be together. And they, his parents were married in Bergen-Belsen concentration camp after the liberation and emigrated to Toronto, where they started a new life in the way that so many survivors did. I was so impressed by the heartfelt way in which Getty went through the ways that his family survived and the miracle that it was for every single person and family that was able to survive that terrible time. I love that he started this book with that because it was such a tremendous and honest homage to just simply the miracle that he ever existed. and. I just, I want to thank Getty, if you're watching, you for doing that. I think it was a tremendously dignified and wonderful way to start your memoir. The early part of the book also covers Getty's childhood, how different Getty felt than the other kids on his block and in his school, and his early aspirations in music. And anybody who's been a young musician knows just how difficult it is when you're trying to find your people and you're joining this band and it's not working out and you're joining that band and it doesn't quite jive, but it's about getting more experience and learning who you are as a person and a musician. He doesn't an amazing job of discussing how he came to have the values that he had. And when he met another student named Alex, who became part of this incredible trio, how much the two of them gelled and just kind of nerded out on the same kind of music. And it put the both of them on a very similar trajectory, which put at odds the first drummer of Rush, One John Rutsey, who had a different philosophy and a different set of likes and dislikes about music. What I loved about this book is how heart-renderingly transparent Getty was about the people who are the heroes and the zeros in his story. And he spoke in a very candid way 
uh, quite surprisingly so, about many people. And he always does this in his characteristically dignified way, but he speaks about things in a way that makes you truly feel it as a human in the way that people have righted and wronged throughout the time of his life and throughout the career of Russia's time. I really enjoyed Getty's incredible explanation of the early time of Rush, because this was at a time when they were figuring themselves out and figuring where it was that they sat in the pantheon of different rock acts that there were. And he explains without saying just how there were a couple of breaks that happened, but those things were so incredibly hard earned. And it, it's a great kind of, uh, story on just how hard you have to work in order for your band, for your business, for your brand, for your company, for your product to really break. Those things don't come in some sort of magic way because some music producer just happens to attend your show somewhere and all of a sudden sign you to some great deal or buy your big piece of art or infuse your company with a million dollars so that you can really get started. Those things take years and years of work, lots of setbacks, lots of frustration, and a dedicated crew of people who are there, who are dedicated to the mission and support one another. That is truly key in your story and in Getty's. Critical to the history of Rush, Rush never caved. They never compromised. They never produced an ooh baby song beyond their first album when they were still trying to figure out who they were. A lot is said about Rush and an early affinity with Ayn Rand's work, including Anthem and The Fountainhead and Atlas Shrugged. And they've been, unfortunately, kind of pigeonholed into, well, they're an Ayn Rand band. Well, at a certain point in their life, they kind of were because they were reading this wonderful philosophy and really resonating with how hard it is to keep your vision uncompromised how easy it is for somebody to buy you, and whether or not you're going to allow for somebody to do that. And there have been interviews with both Neil and Getty where they spoke about both of them with Alex ready to throw in the towel. If it's not going to work, we'll all just go back to work at, at a hardware store, pumping gas or whatever it is, because we are going to do music our way. We are going to create what we want for the world. And if the world loves it, fantastic. But we're going to create this music out of our own values. And so for that period of time, which was in the 1970s, this band lived by this, and it became just a foundational value. Even though they wouldn't necessarily call themselves an Ayn Rand band, they would call themselves a band who worked very hard to produce music and art based upon their own values. And those of us who have been lifelong Rush fans appreciate them so much for this because they didn't go down a road of fast cash by producing music that wasn't authentically about them. They produced music that became incredibly meaningful, and they developed a fan base that was so incredibly dedicated. Why? Because it was that genre. It was that thing. There was no other band that was like them, and they could reach into your heart and tell you, keep going. Don't give up. Be loyal. Be loving to the people around you, which is, in many cases, the kind of lyrical theme of much of their work. Something that I really appreciated in this book is Getty's willingness to just simply be open and vulnerable. Something that's not easy for people who are famous. He spoke over several decades of how difficult it was for him to maintain the most important relationships in his life, which is, of course, a marriage and being a father. He had a difficult time doing this because of the demands of recording and the road. And he talked in vivid detail in a way that I feel is so important about what it felt like for him to be on a plane, leaving his family, and going, am I doing the right thing? Am I the right kind of father? Am I the right kind of person? He also discussed the importance that going to marriage therapy helped with him and his wife in their lives in being able to rediscover each other. 
and to, in being able to communicate with each other, to rediscover what they love about one another. And they have been together for a very, very long period of time because they fought for it, because of the communication. The other thing about this is he talks about communication, not just in his marriage, but between the three band members and the importance, and this is really important, of communication for the sake of understanding whether or not everybody's still on the same page. And if you don't talk about it, you all kind of assume that you are on the same page, but sometimes you're not and you don't know that until you actually have that communication, hopefully not spurned on by somebody who is absolutely at it, because that sort of thing can be very destructive. He talks about the importance of communication when you are on a team, that there is a regular check-in, a regular check-in for what is going on if you're creating with the same sense of excitement together and when you need to make a turn for the sake of keeping everybody on the same page. The three of these men did this so beautifully because they were all so completely dedicated to being at the same level on a team. Absolutely masterfully done over an entire lifetime. It is a lesson that all of us can learn about the power of humility and loyalty. For those of us who are Rush fans, it's really difficult to explain just how much love we have for these three guys because of the people that they are and the music they've, that they've created that have become the soundtrack for our lives. One of the wonderful things that Getty did a wonderful job of including is just simply the real struggles, the real humanity that these three men dealt with as a part of the band. I didn't know that Neil had a tremendous fear of flying and that during a flight, he had to actually have the private jet that they had that they had rented land because he just needed to get off. It's a very human thing. And also the physical difficulties that Alex had in kind of keeping up with life on the road towards the end of the touring career of Rush. And of course, Getty's insatiable desire to be a creator, somebody who continues to to be a performer and how hard it was for him at the end of Rush to deal with the fact that that was at that point the end of all of that and how hard it was for him to cope with that and that he still wants to produce music which all of us hope that he definitely does one of the biggest themes for me in this book was the power of friendship and loyalty and towards the end of this book, he tells a few very vivid stories about what some of the band members went through, and it touches you to the very core of you. And we're talking about tragic things that have happened in the lives of the band members and the way that they rallied towards one another and the way that they supported one another through everything. It's very difficult in life to find people who are truly loyal to you. And all of us know what it's like to be deeply betrayed. But the three of these men never did that. They stuck with each other through thick and thin, through arguments, through laughter, through differences. They always respected one another. And this culminated in an end of book that was just absolutely mind-blowing in terms of the power of friendship and the power of loyalty and how these three men created such beauty in the world together and how much that friendship and loyalty meant in the end with the passing of drummer Neil Peart and in the final moments of them all together as friends. I'm so happy that this book was written and I feel like I know these guys better, even though I'm just a fan. I think it's very important as a takeaway from this book that the lessons of staying with your values, of profoundly hard work, of communication, of friendship and loyalty, and of not compromising your values and the things that you are creating by yourself or with your friends or with your team. Loyalty matters. And that's one of the big takeaways from this book that I think anybody can quite learn from. I would recommend this book certainly to anybody who has ever loved Rush but also to people who just want to hear a profoundly wonderful story about a group of people who spent a lifetime in a wonderful way together.
and produced beauty together. I'm giving this book a five stars. And I'm giving this book a five stars because I would have given it a five stars no matter what, because I'm a huge Rush fan. But five stars because of the storytelling, of the vivid nature of things, and that you really get a sense for who these people are. They don't just care about each other. They cared about their road crew. They cared about their lives. They cared about making sure that if somebody had a health problem, they were able to support that person into getting the help for their health problem. That is true humanity. And these three men have created such an amazing body of work that can be enjoyed for generations to come. So in the end, a wonderful, wonderful book by an incredible man who has been the, the front man for Rush, one of the greatest rock acts of all time. So go out there and be something great. Be good to one another. Be loyal. Communicate with one another. And Treat the people on your team and the people around you with dignity and grace, because in the end, that will spell the worth that you had in this life.